What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we've got a couple product announcements from Kef. We are going to be joined by Mr. Jack Sharkey. Hey there, Shane. How are you? Pretty good. Welcome back, man. Thanks, so man. It's good we, to be back. Yeah. What do we got today? Well, we've got some really exciting news. We've got um, two product announcements that we that we made today uh, based on our LS50 collection. So it's the LS50 Meta, which is uh, the passive version in the collection, and the LS50 Wireless 2, which also has all of the the, the acoustic uh, technical components of the LS50 Meta, but is obviously an, an active wireless speaker. Uh, and we're really excited about it because this this um, meta, meta absorption technology, MAT, meta material mm -hmm. absorption technology, is really a big deal. It's made a tremendous difference in in how you can hear it so if, i'm going to just go ahead and maybe describe meta a little bit to you mm -hmm. uh, i keep referring to it as meta but properly it's meta material so you know inside of a speaker cabinet there's there's a problem and and the problem is caused by the fact that when your speaker is producing energy sound waves out the front of the box it's producing the exact same amount of energy into the rear of the box now, the problem with that is it tends to bounce around inside of the speaker cabinet and it'll come back and interfere with the sound that's being made presently. So in other words, you have a slice of a song, uh, the sound goes out, the sound bounces around for a couple of milliseconds, and then it will come back and um, interfere with, with the sound being currently made. Now, what that tends to do is it muddles up the sound, it reduces definition, it reduces detail, you lose some nuance, and you can kind of hear the fact that there's there's this, this resonance, this noise going on. With meta material, we've we've gone a step farther than what we've what people have been doing in the industry. And we actually did the first thing in 1967 to try and tame this energy. And what we did at that point is if you can imagine the rear of the, the tweeter, we took a, a sort of a rubberized plastic tube that was 32 inches long there you go it's right there right so yeah. in this in this section you know right here and what that theoretically did was was take the sound and give it nowhere to bounce back to and it kind of just kept continued traveling down the tube until it dissipated and was was sort of empty of energy um it was okay it wasn't great because it made some other resonances and there was other noises that were involved with that. But, you know, for 50 odd years ago, it was a, it was a tremendous uh, start. Now, what we've done, if you want to switch back to that other picture, that wafer that yep. that we had there, the, the top picture. Um, so this is a, a cut a cutaway of the UniQ driver um, and the meta material acoustic. Uh, uh, the meta material absorption technology disc, as you can see here, it sits along the bottom of the driver. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we're going to give it a shot. So we come out of the center of the tweeter, and these lines are actually graphical representations of sound energy, because that energy has to go somewhere, right? It just right. It, we have to do something with it. But what it does is it goes down into this into this disc, which is is just made of plastic, and you know it's 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 a material. Plastic in and of itself in nature is not going to absorb sound. In fact, it does the exact opposite, right? It'll, it'll make sound resonate and kind of rattle a little bit. We've all heard it before. But through the use of, of modeling and algorithms in our partnership with a company called Acoustic Meta Materials Group, which are the, sort of the premier company in the world using these new materials to, to uh, take care of sound resonances and, and and sort of tame and quiet energy down, um, we've come up with this really cool thing. And so we look at this throat from the tweeter, and then it comes out. This actually here is the meta material. This is the disc. It's 0.43 inches thick, and it's about three inches or so in diameter. And what it has, it has 30 different channels that are sort of routed and it looks sort of like a little bit of a maze. Some people are saying it looks like the West world, right? Um, those of us who have those, remember the mosquito things that it light up to, there you go. Right. So, it, you know, <laughs> so what happens is the sound will come down into these little channels. Again, there's 30 of them and each one resonates at a particular octave or particular frequency. All right. So it handles 
uh, it's like a Heimholtz resonator. If you can pick, imagine blowing on a bottle, right? You get different tones and everything. Right. And that's from the standing waves and the resonances. So each one um, is handles its own particular frequency range. So if you can imagine if I was sending a 620 hertz signal out, out through the tweeter and it went back and it got in there, one of these channels would, would be excited, would light up, just one. And then what that channel would do is it would absorb the acoustic energy through the resonances, through the, right. the resonation, and give it nowhere to go. It becomes a black hole. It just disappears, and it does not bounce back to the driver. So, okay, cool. Well, what we're able to do is from frequencies from like 620 hertz, as I mentioned, all the way on up, um, we can now dissipate 99% of all of that rearward fired energy, the rearward firing energy that um, – causes us so much grief in terms of detail and nuance and whatnot. Um, really serious, good, baffled cabinet speaker designs are able to do about 60% of that material with it before they, they cause other things. We're able to do 99% of it without causing any other resonances or right because everything in physics is always a compromise. If I do something here, it causes something else here. But that's not the case with this metamaterial. Mm -hmm. uh, metamaterial basically is is the, the the name of a material that has been manipulated through computer design and whatnot to do something that it does not do in nature. So like, as I mentioned before, plastic does not absorb sound in nature, you know, hard plastic, but in this material, it does. So the difference between that 60% and that 99% is it's, it's utterly amazing. It, it really is. I know I read in the forums and it, forums this morning and all I'm, you know, we're all jaded in this industry. We all, you know, everything time, every time somebody comes out with something new, it's a gimmick. It's this, that, and the other thing. It's marketing yeah. or whatever, right? And, you know, the in industry just has to sort of live with that. Yeah. This is anything but. When I first heard the the LS50 Metas, when I did my testing with it, I was astounded. There's one album that I've used since the beginning of my career. That I know every nuance of this particular record. And I use it to test um, my own systems or when I was doing things professionally, whatever. This is, this is how I, I wanted to, how I would test the system. And there were sounds within this opening track of this record that um, I, I knew should have been there. They were there in my brain, but I'd never actually heard them before. Um, it, it, and it was it was amazing to me that the, the detail and, and everything that I was able to hear. So um, what I'm going to say is as much as everybody thinks that things like this are gimmicks and this, that, and the other thing, you got yeah. to hear these things, Shane, because they're amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely so, going to try to get them in here. So, yeah, so what this, right? what this does is what this is, is basically it's not a new tweeter per se, right? So this is no. a, like an absorber. Yeah, so let's. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I think you have yeah. it. And I'm going to take that cutaway picture. Yeah, so this is a Uniq driver. So what the, the yeah. Meta is doing, uh, the, the LS50 Meta and the LS50 Wireless 2 are using the 12th generation Uniq, which is basically the same Uniq that's, yeah. that was released in our reference uh, in our reference line. Um, so if, down in the bottom, we, we found this really cool, uh, amazingly efficient way to attach this disc to the throat of of the tweeter in the uniq as you can see the cutaway from there yeah um so it's the same uniq it's our core technology it's what we do but now we've upped the game uh even further even on our own uniq by this additional sort of 39 percent of uh, of sound energy that we're able to absorb what we also found cool is that this is kind of a cool aside in the midst of the design, we we noticed our tangerine waveguide, which acts as a bit of a compression driver and and it helps with the dispersion of the UniQ. So particularly for home theater and for positioning and sound stage, two channel music even, as well. Um, this the, the tangerine waveguide does um, a, a lot of of the the background quiet work about that makes the the sound stage what it is. It's a very important feature to the UniQ. And what we found is with the meta material, there was actually some disturbances and some resonances that were in there that we hadn't really been aware of. We hadn't really heard before. That's how clear the meta material absorber mm. made it. So we actually did some tweaks to the to the tangerine waveguide, which is right in the center here, um, covering the tweeter. So it is a in addition to the twelfth generation Uniq um, that 
just absolutely does an amazing, an amazing job. So what we're going to find now is that's going to be in the LS50 Meta and the LS50 Wireless too. So the LS50 Meta, I'm going to, let's see, can I advance here? Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Let's see Should what be. we can do. There we go. Yeah. Oh, well, we got this slide. Let me just talk about this picture right here. This is the LS50 Meta. So in on top of adding that sound absorber to the to the UniQ, mm -hmm. we did uh, some tweaks to the to the bracing of the cabinet to make it even more uh, sound neutral or you know more dense, so you don't get any cabinet vibrations whatsoever. And then we touched up the rear of the cabinet a little bit. You can see. Um, you know, the, the port itself is is a little more refined. The, the back bezel of the, of the cabinet has that nice curve to it that sort of reflects or evokes the front baffle. And then we recessed slightly the the terminals as well. So it, it really is an altogether, um, it's just a much more elegant. And, and you know, certainly the LS50 is, a, is an iconic, it's a classic. It's not going to... Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be in people's memories for years and years. It's a, it's a, that was a paradigm shifting speaker when it first came out too. But now the LS50 Meta is sort of what we would expect to do when in the next version of that. Um, you can see the, you know, the four colors in, in the black, the titanium gray, the mineral white, and then we have the, the special edition, which is the royal blue. Okay, and another thing before we move on with these, Shane, the other, yeah. they also come with uh, a bespoke S2 stand. So each of the LS50s. Metas have drill holes in the wireless as well. Uh, they have dyed drill holes in, in the bottom that you can attach the stand. You, you can bolt the stand to the to the speaker itself, and you can fill the stand with uh, an inert material. To you know, it makes it solid as as can be. Right. Uh, but the cool thing is, in each of the four finishes of the LS50 Meta, we also have the stand that's the same color. Same thing with the wireless as well. So now you've got an entire package. You don't have, you know, you have a stand that was designed and yeah. looks as elegant as the speaker itself. So you say you can fill the uh, those stands with uh, like sand or something like that, or yeah, use it in inert material. Yeah. Um, there's there's different products that you can use, and and what that does, uh, the first thing that it does is obviously it makes it more solid. Mm -hmm. It 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 couples it to the to the floor more firmly, both acoustically and physically. So it's it's safer, but it also reduces comb filtering and a lot of the nasty things that that speaker stands with it, with with bookshelves and, and stand mount speakers. That's kind of inherent to the beast, and and so stands. A lot of people don't put a lot of thought into the stand for a speaker, uh, yeah. but it's actually really really critical and can really change the sound of your speaker if you have a, a poorly designed stand or a poorly right. fitting stand. Yeah, yeah. So that's LS50 Meta. Is it, so would you say there's a you're saying that there's a, a pretty noticeable difference between the original 50s and the the Metas? Well, it's. It's an upgrade, right? It's a newer yeah. version. Um, it's you know the LS50 was the original was an amazing speaker in what it did on its own in soundstage uh, and and in development of of the overall detail of the of the, the the acoustic picture that it was painting. What this does is is it ups the game, right? right? It's 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 a it's a different. It's a different experience when I, I alluded to the record that I listened to and, and it was prominent in this particular album is Fender Rhodes. And now for an example, when you play a, a Fender Rhodes as a keyboard, right, it's an electric piano. There's a very particular felt hammer sound that happens between the pressing and the actual note. And it's in there. If you've heard it in a studio, it's it what makes the Fender Rhodes such a unique instrument. So I knew that that sound was there having heard a Fender Rhodes live before. Mm -hmm but I'd never heard it recorded before. And the very first thing that jumped out at me was this incredible detail, this space that this particular sound just sat in all by itself. So if, you, if you're familiar with LS50 and, and you love LS50 for that detail, mm -hmm. uh, this is going to take you to a, to a different place. It's going to take you to, to, to another level. 39% more of that sort of mm -hmm. sound is going to, is going to be interesting uh, taken away right and yeah. and detail yeah yeah okay 39 percent. that's pretty big that's pretty big <laughs> it's, yeah actually it's usually theoretically yeah. i mean you know you could say it takes all the sound out but there's always a little bit you know so i mean to be proper 
about it and to be conservative in the way that we do things. You know, we're going to say 99 percent, but quite mm -hmm. frankly, across some of the spectrum, all of that sound is is taken away. It's certainly for all intents and purposes that it's never going to reach your ear. So um, this guy came late to the show. So it's basically a cabinet resonator inside. It's actually a re an absorber, not a resonator. Well, from a from a technical standpoint, it is it it, it acts like a resonator in, mm -hmm. in function. Right. It, it's like it's like a Heimheld resonator, or you know what they use in, in mufflers. You know that that mm -hmm. same principle of of technology. That yeah, what we're doing is we're 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 allowing the the standing waves within the chamber to to cancel each other out. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, the, the technical explanation for it from, okay. from Nels here from this question. Sure. Yeah. All righty. All right, and then of course we have the. The wireless versions, right? Yeah. So now what we've done is we've taken all of these refinements, the the flexible tuned port and the 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 updated Uniq 12th generation Uniq with the meta material on it, the bracing and all that, and then we've we've put it into a into an active wireless system um, that is we have a hundred watt AB class AB amp on mm -hmm. one there's one amp in each cabinet that it, you know just for the the tweeter for the high frequency and right. then we have uh, another amp 280 watt uh, class d lf mf amplifier so in each cabinet there's its own dac for each frequency band you know for lf mf and for yeah. hf and then the amplifier so we're going to multiply that for the left and right channels um with its a, a built-in dsp with our music integrity engine which is sort of our uh, really, really well developed and and, and really well defined uh, digital uh, signal processing element that we we, we put in there, um, and we've upgraded the app, so it's just a single app now. It's called the Kef Connect app. The operating system for the whole shebang is actually inside the speaker now, so it's far more robust in terms of how it's going to um, how the the interaction between your phone or your device and the speaker. Um, and then we have our new W2 wireless platform, which uh, I was I was delighted when I, I'm on a mesh network here, and 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 my particular setup is is not kind at all to these kind of no matter who the manufacturer is not kind to these kind of things, and, and I'll tell you it, it fired right up. I was able to onboard it right away. It's just a tremendous. Um, user experience that we've that we've been able to put together with that and we, you know we could do kuba uh, kobas uh deezer title spotify um it, apple airplay 2 um google chrome chromecast and all and it, you're going to operate that from your phone or from from your device um so that's a major step forward as well and you're going to now we have what we call intelligent wireless you can do your your firmware updates without the interspeaker cable you can play 96k 24 bit um, res high resolution files without the inner speaker cable and with the inner speaker cable you're up to 192 24 and and sometimes mm. people go well it's not really truly wireless at that point um but wireless at 192 24 is is really not a an actual thing across the board yet from you know the technology and, and other um uh, sort of in, in other stable technologies in, in manufacturers so um you know at 192.24 if you're a listener at at, at 192.24 having to put a cat six cable between your two speakers is not a big deal at all yeah but you can listen to 96.24 without without the the, the inter speaker cable which is a really huge deal is there a reason why you didn't go with class d for both uh both amps well in in particular with the high frequency um class a b is is still basically state of the art um class d is a really really great amplifier particularly the way that we have it tuned and set for lower frequencies um mm -hmm. but in general class a b in the higher frequencies is going to outperform so the thought behind that is look we've got this amazing thing that happens from 600 hertz you know thereabouts and above um we can you know we could do a class d and it would sound very very cool and it would you know it would be fine uh but if we do a class a b we're going to up that game even more and take full advantage of what the the meta material absorber is actually doing right. so that's why we're using the two different styles okay 
the the the, uh, the original Elvis Fifty Wireless it's fairly new still. Am I correct? Four years. I, I guess it came out in it four uh, years ago. Tw- 2015. Well, I guess we're on five years now. So I guess Is it came it out years? in sort of November, October, November of 2015. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, my, my mind must be. I guess that is a while ago. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes we all we we get our our time zones mixed up. We forget what yeah. year something came out. You know, it's what happens. Yeah. And um, let me see what else. And I think there's a question here. When were these available? Um, they're available now, right? You were fifty. Yeah, the LS50 Meta is ready to yeah. go. Um, so I would I would absolutely, if you could, book a demo as quickly as possible to hear these things. Um, that sounds like there's people on their way rushing right now to get a demo <laughs> out the window. Um, and then the uh, the Wireless 2 is on pre-order. Uh, it's available. It's just, you know, getting everything. Logistics right now, in case, you know, right, anybody doesn't know logistics right now or kind of yeah. an odd thing right so the l50 wireless 2 is on pre-order and it's going to be shipping soon very soon but uh in, in i mean certainly in a, in a matter of weeks is uh the meta material going to find its way to the flagship speakers well you know we're we're in this business to to make speakers sound as great as we absolutely can. I'm not privy to any information right now. I don't find that out until I'm one of the last people to find some of that stuff out, which is pretty typical. <laughs> um, but what I will tell you is that this is this is an adjunct to our core technology yeah. that um, we're really really happy with. So you know you can take that answer for what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about the the wireless subwoofer receiver? Oh, cool! Yeah. So uh, earlier in the summer, we introduced uh, uh, this the KW one wireless subwoofer uh, subwoofer adapter uh, kit, and this is used specifically with our KF ninety two subs and our Cube series subs. If you ever looked in the back, there's this little four pin expansion port back there. That's what this plugs into. So the the uh, you, what you do is you would attach your transmitter for the kw1 to your 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 preamp or your amplifier whatever and then attach the receiver to the expansion port in the back and it's powered off the usb right off the subwoofer uh and you're at this point now able to move the subwoofer pretty much anywhere in the room the the wireless that we're using which is also sort of this smart wireless which is it kind of the this the same principle as what we're, we're doing now with the ls50 wireless 2 yeah. so it allows you to to really kind of place it without uh the interference problems and things that a lot of these these things have, have caused in the past latency um is is barely an issue and that's what i'm talking when we have two of these daisy chains together certainly with one of them in in the subwoofer frequencies it's it's the latency is not noticeable which is a really, really obviously, right? You well know, right? A super important thing when you're yep. dealing with subwoofers with cinema and stuff. Um, so it's just this cool little little thing that sort of gives you the freedom to do things with your subwoofers that that you weren't really able to do uh, in the past. You can eliminate your cable, and so if if you need to move the subwoofer a couple of feet even away from 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 where your your optimal cable placement is, but you, you find it sits better or sounds better in another area of the room. Uh, you're set to go with this so um it's it's a it's a cool little thing and it's been it's been fun watching this thing fly off the shelf um because it's 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 picked up a lot of popularity in the list i think it's only been out maybe eight weeks at this point if, if even that much yeah weren't these uh you guys were adding this with the purchase of a kf92 weren't you September, yeah. yeah. So, right, if you, you you go ahead and and pick up your subwoofer now, you get one of these for free. And and, and yeah. if you're in the market for a subwoofer, I mean, by the thirtieth of the month, it's the time to do it because it's 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 kind of an amazing deal. Yeah, for sure. How many of these can you have? Like, if you had four of these, is that going to interfere with each other, or what? Is there a limit? There's been testing. What we're saying from a technical standpoint, you, you can put you can daisy chain two of them. Mm-hmm. So you can you can do dual subwoofers off of one. Um, there, you know, at, at that point you 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 can add on to it, um, but it's not the wireless technology just across the board is is still not 
as as grand as we want in terms of latency and all. Uh, right. Certainly, what you would do is you would put you would have two of these units together. If you wanted to do four subwoofers, you would just put two of the AVs, uh, the AVRs together, right? The the, the, re, the transmitter and the receiver together, and and do that. But if you could daisy chain just one single uh, transmitter unit to two receivers. Okay. How's it going through walls? Uh, because of the frequency that we're using, it's it's robust going through walls. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So and it does this cool thing, frequency hopping, where it'll it'll find the optimal channel um, to to go ahead and use based on interference, based on reception right. and whatnot. Yeah. Is the wireless two ruin ready certified? Okay, it is. It is Rune Ready uh, certification, and this is just whenever you're dealing with a third-party company like we're dealing with Rune, um, you know nobody ever really wants to work on on our exact time schedule, or maybe we don't want to work on their time schedule, and mm -hmm. just, these are things that just happen. So the Rune Ready certification will be part of an upgrade or in, in a firmware update that will happen soon. Um, so the answer to the question is yes, um, with a little bit of patience. <laughs> Uh, this gentleman bought the LS50 wireless a couple months ago, so that you announced the LS50 wireless too. What are the differences, if any, besides the meta material? Right. So there, there are differences, the, the, and they're kind of major. The, the, the W2 platform is, is, is a completely different shift in the way that we handle the onboarding process and the streaming process in and of itself. Uh, so that's that's a major difference there. The app is different. We went from two apps with the LS50 Wireless 2 to one app, which is the Kef Connect app. Um, so there, there's that difference. There. And then there's the electronic differences as well. Like we mentioned the amplifier has been beefed up a little bit and, and uh, there's been some fine tuning to the DSP. Um, so, you know, there's there's a several, several fairly major differences. And that's before we even talk about the meta material itself. And there's HDMI on here? HDMI eARC. Oh, yes, there sir. is. Yeah, look yes. at that. All right. Yep. Yep. Hmm. I didn't know that. And if, if you happen to have a pre eARC uh, television, then you just use the um, the the coax or the yeah. uh, uh, right the TOS link. Right, right, right. Oh, that's cool. All right. You know, question. Between the wireless version of the LS50 and the y passive version, is there, what would be the recommended way to purchase the LS50? What's the best way to get the best sound out of it? The self-powered one or to get your own amplifiers with it? That You know, that's a, a great question that is basically unanswerable or it's 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 infinitely answerable, whichever way you'd like to go. Um, so in, in my particular home theater use and you, with the standard AVR receiver, um, obviously you would use the passives um, and you get a good amplifier there and, and, and put everything together and match it. It'll work really, really, really well. If you're just kind of looking at a two channel system and you do, uh, maybe not as serious listening, which I really hate to even say that because I hmm. think anytime you sit and listen to a movie or music, it's, it's kind of serious in and of itself. Um, the, the cool thing about the LS50 wireless too, is you're getting the, the amplifier, and you're getting the DSP and, and the DAC and all that stuff, which really, really high level audiophile level stuff in one box for, you know, an extra, you know, $800 or a or thousand dollars or whatever. So it, it really isn't, a, it, the answer isn't about listening. It's or, or what actually sounds better. The answer is what do you want from these things? And by having the LS50 meta, for folks that are just going to be setting up a passive, either a music system or a movie system, it's perfect. And for folks who are more interested in in sort of the um, convenience of just getting the whole package put together, uh, then you have the LS50 wireless too. So really, you know, it's kind of cool. The LS50 collection um, has has the best of both worlds for whichever way you want to go. Yeah. What did you say though that since the amplifiers are built into the 50, that you have it voiced to how it's supposed to sound? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's what we would call a bespoke amplifier. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 an amplifier that is is designed to work specifically with the DSP and with the onboard DAC and with the cabinet volume and with the, you know the porting and the speakers and all. It's 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 like the truly perfect amp 
for for that box. Now, that's not to say that you can't go with the passes and get yourself a, a really wicked setup that is, you know, is as perfect as the LS50 wireless too. Obviously, there's there's the time and the education involved to make sure that you're getting the right piece. And then there's the cost factor as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you certainly could do it. I mean, I've done I have I have a left center and right LS 50s that I've fine tuned and I've got, you know, the equipment that I use with them and, and whatnot is um, it gives me an experience that's that's on par with my experience with my LS 50 wireless. So it's a matter of what you're looking to get out of these things. So since you have separate amps for the wireless, the uh, Class D and AB amps, why is there no version of the LS50 that is by wireable? Well, that has mostly to do with the actual configuration of the UniQ driver and, and, and the way that we're, we're crossing over and the way that we have the system set up. When you're, when you're going to go by wire, you're very specifically generally dealing with a, a set of low frequency drivers that are separate. You're basically looking at a three-way system where you would have the LS, the LF drivers or the woofers and the mid-range driver and the UniQ. Whereas this, this tuned port re, uh, base reflex box is the mid-range and the tweeter. And the way that we do the crossover, it, it, it sort of makes it unnecessary, and and then it's not worth the expense of having to put the the, the other terminals in and all. It raises the price up for for a, a smaller percentage of people that are going to use this particular speaker in that manner, simply because it does not have those LF uh, drivers right. in it. Okay. A couple of questions here from the subscribers: Are kept speakers designed to be aimed straight ahead with no toe in? Love that question. I love that question because it lets me talk about UniQ for a couple of seconds here. Mm -hmm. So our core technology is UniQ, and that is basically where we have a, a coincident tweeter um, using the mid-range driver as a waveguide. It, 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 so the sounds from the high frequency and the mid-frequency come from physically the same space, the same X, Y, and Z coordinates in space and time. So you don't have any kind of competition with, with sounds arriving at your ears at different times. Um, so in and of itself, if you have a UniQ, um, we'll just talk about LS50 because that's what we're, we're kind of talking about today. You're going to get a 170 degree dispersion angle from the from the baffle wide. So that means I could be sitting in, in one particular chair, you'd be sitting in the next chair over from me, and we're going to have the same listening experience. So technically, they are designed to be able to use with, with no toe-in. But that's in a perfect room, in a perfect environment, with, you know, perfect everything. And that just simply doesn't exist. So in, in a room that's, you know, even slightly off square in terms of maybe you're sitting over a little bit to, to the left more than, than you're sitting to the right or whatever, um, you, can, you, you can experiment with toe-in. Certainly I've experimented with toe-in in my theater. And in fact, my theater, if you have OCD uh, and you need to have your speakers have the exact same toe-in, you're going to hate it because I have one toed in um, probably maybe five to eight degrees more than the other one because my room is weird just the shape of the room and all so that was a matter of just sitting and kind of figuring out what's what's the best that's the long answer to the question the short answer to the question is yeah you can you know you can confidently set these things up without towing and and get the maximum experience that you would expect out of a uniq driver all right thank you for the question there b swagger is there any chance of an active r3 well if there is, nobody sent me an email about it. So, um, you know, I, you're never going to say never, but I'm also, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not privy to that. Like, again, I said, I'm, I'm way down low in the funnel in terms of, of hearing what the, what the guys in the ivory tower in engineering over in the UK are doing. Um, so I don't know. I'm hopefully maybe I'm back in, in a couple of years time or whenever a couple of months, who knows, uh, to talk about them. But right now I don't have any information. What do you suggest for connectivity for those wanting to run near field from a PC now that USB is no longer an option? Well, if you if you can do the TOS link, that would be um, that would be the way that I could I would go. Certainly, you probably can't do TOS link because you're probably if you're going to use it in a near field edition coming out of a out of a laptop. Um, what I would 
I would do in this particular case, and uh, what I've, I've done in the past is I would just simply stream it. I would, I was, I would simply stream it. Say, use Rune or, or any of the other platforms to go straight out of Kobuz or straight out of Title, um, and and not even worry about that sort of wired connection between your your platform and the, and the speakers. Um, and particularly now with the W two platform, the, the 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 wireless connection is so robust that you're just not you're, you're not going to hear. At least I haven't experienced any of those little dropouts and those pings and stuff. And that's also, you know, of course, assuming that your your network is is good and robust. But that would be my suggestion. And obviously, you could always go with the analog input if you wanted to. Um, and just real quick on the analog, what we do, because this might actually help you make your decision. Um, when we come out of when we receive an analog signal, we're going to convert it to a, a um, 192.24 uh, digital signal to join our digital path, and then we'll go. We'll treat it exactly like we would treat anything else that we have going in. Um, so one of the reasons why you know U USB is is sort of a um, a lot of people use it, but it's not uh, the most common. You know, and, and at the end of the day, we have to we have real estate. We have to worry about. We have electronics we have to worry about. We have pricing we have to worry about. So because there are other options like Toslink and like streaming, uh, you, you know, the USB was, we thought, easily replaceable. All right. Thanks for the question there, Randall. You know, I had a kind of off-topic question here. Um, how do you feel? Totally sort of off-topic question. Difference between going with a hi-fi speaker, like, kept speakers and going for for your home theater for like actual theater speakers because i know a lot of people like to buy like jbl theater speakers for their home rather than going for like like the hi-fi-esque kind of brands do you, do you see a big difference between that my personal thought is 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 hi-fi i'm gonna i'll just say it a different way home theater is another way to listen to hi-fi right so if you look at the way that it's mixed and mastered in the studio the way that the sound you know the, the same sound 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 engineer he has the same thought process whether he's doing music or he's doing movies it's still all about the fidelity of the sound and and the placement of it so in and obviously then you got to take into consideration space um some people have a really small theater space so, you know in some cases maybe it's 10 by 12 feet or whatever um and in a, a a hi-fi set of speakers is going to outperform in those spaces because it's designed originally to be in those kind of spaces to begin right. with okay yeah i had a, somebody wanted me to ask you that question uh off off the chat here okay i always figured i always figured that theater speakers are more for higher spl at bigger theaters yeah. bigger theater bigger spaces rooms. Yeah. When you're, you're you're when you're basically pressurizing more air volume, you know, yeah. when, when you've got it, you know. Now on the other side, our CAF Experience Center in in at our headquarters, our U.S. headquarters in New Jersey, um, is I I don't know the exact dimensions off the top of my head, but it's about the size of a small sort of multiplex cinema. Um, and we, of course, use it to showcase all of our products and everything. And so when you get into the into the discussion about pressurizing a room, we do a really, really good job of pressurizing the room. And the speakers are, are a, a major component of that. And so is the amplification and, and the way they're set up. So so if you're going to go with if you're going to go with theater speakers, you've got to make sure you've got the amplification behind it to drive those things. Yeah. I fi is going to be tend to be a little bit easier to drive. Easy. I had it. All right. That's kind of what I figured. Um, another question from a Patreon subscriber. Um, he wanted to know, he's got four of the THX in-wall subwoofers, and he cannot get that to sound good. Is there any tips for that? Hmm. So using a, a, a Casa 500 amp? I have no idea what he's using for amps. Yeah, I know. I was hoping maybe he yeah. could hear it and type it real quick. Um, he, what I'm going to suggest that he do, this is probably a question. The answer to the question is, yeah, it's probably a setup thing, and, and, and there's probably something that can be done with his amplification. Um, what, what we find so often with subwoofers is that it's it's a minor tweak that to the listener is not minor, right, because mm -hmm. the speakers don't sound good. But in, in terms of technically, it's, it's kind of a minor tweak of things we can do. What I would offer for him to do is to get in touch with us. Um, he could even get in touch with our service department and have them forward to me directly. 
Okay. And, and I'll work with him on that and see if we can come up with an answer. And then maybe he can get back to you in a couple of months and, and let you know how we fixed it. Uh, but I'd be more than happy to have him get in touch with me directly if you wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely relay the message. He also picked up the, uh, I told him to pick up the uh, KF-92s because they, they rock. And uh, <laughs> he really, yeah, he really loves those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That is a great, great subwoofer. It's uh, I'm so pleased with it. it and it, it looks great. But yeah, I'm really glad to hear that that's what, uh, that, that's what you've been using. You've been happy with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I got in recently? I got it in recently these these gigantic 130 pound subwoofers, dual pose, just like the 92s, 13.8 inch drivers on each side. And I plopped, I plopped them in and I was like, I was like, man, this is missing the low end, like the little really? caps. I was like, what is going on here? Huh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the deal was, but I mean, I, I took me. Same, same spot up and everything. Yeah, same spot and everything. I was just like, shit. Oh. I was like, that's really weird that these little subwoofers actually seem to have more lower bass. I as, mean, to be as fair, though, as I, that is, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. That you're saying <laughs> that at all. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, though, it took me it took me a little bit of tweaking with the processor, some EQ and stuff. So to yeah, get it, it always does. To get it to sound good, but yeah, just out of the box, them little subwoofers. I was like, man, I kind of miss those little subwoofers because these big ones, hey, they sound good. A little overbearing, but yeah. So it's it's funny because we you know we think you know people ask us why aren't you doing a 15 inch driver why aren't you doing a 20 inch driver and stuff because we don't have to you know yeah. um and 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 why why go through that expense for something that is is just not necessary to do yeah. because you you know size is not always everything particularly in audio it just isn't mm -hmm. yeah I, I think that it's it's a good combo between like quick bass and that, that surprisingly low output down low like yeah. uh, very surprisingly low yeah. Uh, we got Mr. Giles here. Jack, ah. you are everywhere today. <laughs> uh, it's my buddy Giles. Yes, I'm making the rounds today. I feel, yeah, it's like I'm on a book tour. I love this. I'm having a, because <laughs> I get to just geek out all day long and talk about stuff that I just love to talk about. So, yeah, yeah. It's funny. yeah. But the uh, LS50s are now available, correcto? LS50 meta, meta? Sorry, Meta. Yeah. meta yeah. Uh, yeah. They're all available, right? We're selling them. The LS50 are in stock and ready to go. Book your demo today. The LS50 wireless, as we mentioned, because of logistics and just because it's been such a weird sort of year and whatnot, um, they're 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 imminently available. It, it will not be long at all. That's awesome. And yeah. certainly we take pre-orders pre on them. And I would advise if you're thinking about doing it is to jump on that pre-order bandwagon just to get them in as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get some of these black ones in here. Awesome speaker. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait, dude. Um, all right, Jack. Um, anything else you wanna you wanna talk about? I listen, I could go on for hours, but I think we covered everything that we needed to talk about today. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Well, all right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you guys want to listen to the audio portion of this, I'll put it up on uh, Anchor, on iTunes, Spotify, your favorite podcasting host. Jack, thanks for stopping by again, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Shane. It's always a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, man.